Because when you're born, you sort of look, and, and right. it's on visual aspect, right. it's nothing else. So, right. yeah, they registered me as male. So when did you first realize, this is, something's wrong here? Well, how uh, old were you when you began to say, wait a second, I, sh I don't want to be a boy. <laughs> I want to be a girl. Or um, I should be a girl. Well, you see, I feel I was being brainwashed into a way of life that was totally alien to me. Right. I mean, from three, four onwards, I was dressing and, and doing all the girly things, and... Uh, who, who was dressing you to do girly things? I was. Oh, so <laughs> I was, from the beginning, you went toward female yeah. things? Sure. And all the games and things right. with my sister, as opposed to doing all the rugby and things right. that my brother did. Right. It wasn't sort of, I mean, at 12, 13, I was having blackouts, which was obviously a hormonal thing, but I was in the country and no one sort of, I didn't get what to What do you mean right. blackouts? Like, like a woman going through a menopause. Have you been through your menopause yet? I had a hysterectomy, so I'll never go through it. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I will never say I'm hot. You know? <laughs> well, I never oh. said that, But go on, but so like pre-menstrual stuff. Yes, it yeah. was like hot flushes and, and yeah. uh, I was having a bad time. But then when we were having sex lessons at school, we were sort of told this, this and that. And I just I thought, well, you know, I don't, I'm not attracted to women. And I'm attracted to men. And right. I just assumed I must be gay. Right. So basically I ran away from home and, and discovered myself, but then realized I weren't gay because... Uh, how did you know you weren't gay? <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Well, Seriously, how do you know you're a boy, young okay. boy, not attracted to women, right? Feminine in, in many aspects, right? Um, and you like men the way a woman would like men. So how did you know that doesn't mean that you're not gay, that you really should have been born a woman? Well, you see, gay men don't like to dress up. I mean, there are a few that right. obviously are doing it for the burlesque aspect and, right. and, you know, it's a sort of comedy thing. But for me, it was very serious to wear makeup and look pretty. That for me was serious. Um, and obviously the aspect of, of sex, you know, um, are we allowed to say anal sex on the show? We are now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just wasn't something that was acceptable to me. Right. So my sort of sex for me was like a fantasy. So sex would have been really thinking in terms of what a woman wants for sex, rather than what well, a man might I don't know what a woman want. wants for sex, but I mean, for me, I want right. sort of man to caress and lay on right. top of me and, and to make love to me. And uh, I couldn't do that, so I couldn't function in that way. So I was totally confused that... Uh, then was referred to um, a doctor who specialized in transsexuality. And how did that, somebody just said to you, like a friend just said, you should go to this doctor? I and mean, how did that happen? No, I actually was lucky enough to, to um, fall upon the transsexual who I had no idea was transsexual. I thought she was a woman and, and she said, you know, I'm, I'm going through gender reassignment. And it was like, what's that? And she told me, and, and um, I thought, well, my God, this is like exactly how I feel. Right. So she told me the doctor, and I went along, and over a, uh, you know, a period of sessions, talking about my childhood, and then finally we had tests and things, and it was established that I'm three X's and a Y chromosomally. So Which means? Well, a woman is XX, and a man is XY. Um, so I'm like a mixed bag, so I'm not clinically one thing or the other. I'm still in the middle. But you were leaning, obviously, to feel... Let me ask you, and then we'll go to commercial. When you went to the bathroom as a child, this sounds very stupid. I sat down. You sat down. That's <laughs> good. That was instinct. Yeah, so you just... So really, everything was just all there, except, uh-oh, something's wrong here when you look down. It shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was all in... <laughs> It was all intact, you yeah. know. I mean, it's, it's amazing that I sort of wanted to sort of get rid of it and yeah. spend the rest of my life trying to get my hands on one, but... Okay. Um... <laughs> it's called the commercial. We'll be back in a moment more with You wrap lunch in anything but Reynolds Wrap Aluminum Foil. And, you know... What time. period is this? Like late? What? 60s, late, late 60s. 60s. So everyone was in jeans and shirts? And yeah. What about, and your hair was long then for everybody, so... Well, it was a sort of battle between me and my dad. He liked me to have short back and sides because he said you look too girly, but uh, I wanted to sort of grow my hair and cover my ears, which were a little big. Yeah. But, um... I left home and, and went to London. And uh, what did you do? You arrive in London, you're a woman in a man's body, 
What did, what did you want to do? What did you think you were well, Did you think you were going to model right away? No, 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 no. I got into hairdressing and beauty therapy, so I was training to be a beauty therapist, and the money was terrible, so I, I got an evening job as an nurseurette in one of the um, West End theatres. How old were you about? Uh, 17. Okay, so and really a kid, yeah. 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 And I had a choreographer come up to me and said, have you ever thought about being a showgirl? You were dressing in women's clothing already? Well, it was sort of like trendy unisex stuff. And right. I said, well, I'm a boy, you know. And he said, well, I've heard that you're going through an operation and what have you, and some of the best um, showgirls in Paris are actually transsexual. This is a casting and an audition, and would you like to come along? So I plucked up courage and went and got the job. So I worked three years as a showgirl dancer. But since you had already started, immediately got on the operations? Uh, sorry? Did you do the operations first? Or did you well, put boobs I... in? Or, I mean, what, did you, what did you do first? To look like a girl. Well, I, when I was working as a showgirl, all the other dancers were topless, and I couldn't be topless because my boobs weren't big enough, although I was on um, hormone therapy. But uh, I was very skinny, so they were only, you know, uh, breasts sort of come from fat deposits, and, and oh. I didn't have... <laughs> I'm learning. It's good to know. All right. It's too late. But I... I, I would well, be more donuts. Go ahead. Right. I'll show you mine later and Let's... recommend my surgeon. So, so, so they put them in? Yes, I went along and, and um, had them them done. So I'd stopped the hormones and was able to work topless and earn that much more money for the main operation. Now, where... Is this all done by the government in England? Well, I know it's socialized yes. medicine there. But do they just say, I want boobs, you can get boobs? No, no, I mean, I had... <laughs> no, the main operation is done first, basically, but because of my job, I had the money and I'd done my boobs. But um, the state does allow transsexual operations to be done, and that's been my argument, because we're stuck in legal limbo once we've had surgery and we've got no rights as a female. Right. But so, in other words, they, they take you and they screen you and they test you and then, yes, and then you say you have three X's and then a Y and they say, okay, you can... Yes, but in a lot of cases it's, it's not a chromosome problem, it's a hormonal problem, but uh, in all transsexuals there is that, that situation. So, There's a waiting period, which is something like three years, and then you can get... Surgery. And did you wait for the three years? Yes. I mean, I was working in Paris, Rome, yeah. and all over the place. Now, what about... Hair. Let's just start with facial hair. And ch do you ever have chest hair or, you know, no. back hair? Or, <laughs> you, you know, you see some men on the, uh, like, bow wows on the, on the beach, you know. Uh, what well, about... There's uh, a lot of women like that as well. You see some women like that too, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but thank God for them. But that's... A, but, so, where did you start? You do the breast first. Yes. Now, what about the operation itself? Is it very painful? And well, it done at once? Or? Yes, I mean, it's a five-hour operation. Five hours. You're going to ask me what they do, aren't you? Of course. <laughs> I, want to, I want to know everything. Well, I'll show you if you want yeah. later. All right, all right. Oh. If you can compare oh. notes. All right, all right. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Go on. But, so what... Are, well, I think they sort of... They remove the testicles, obviously. First... Um, yes, I mean, it's a five-hour operation, so they sort of take them out, they open up the penis, take all the um, penal tissue out, then they use all that skin to sort of make a clitoris and turn everything inside to make your vagina. Right. And, um, thank God, I've got a fully functional vagina, and then you're going to ask me if I can have a climax as well, I'm sure. Well, of course, I'm sure everybody has. But can you, ha at, you could have an orgasm and everything, because they well, keep the same tissue and just turn sure. it under. If I'm lucky enough to, f I mean, most guys, they're sort of, you know, wipe it away. But if I've got a guy who's sort of patient and finds my G-spot, then yes. And you say, all right, so, <laughs> so, so you just need somebody that knows what he's doing with you. Sure. Right. Okay. Well, what would this cost? What did it cost you? Did well, in 74, it was 3,000 pounds. Which now would be six thousand dollars, but I don't know. The, the, Which is not expensive. It's nothing, not, not, no, not, not no. for something that affects the rest of your life. I mean, you know, it's like nose job or lips or whatever you have done. I mean, it's all. Was it very price. painful? Because I mean, I, I would think that section of your body would be just. Yeah. I mean, well, stitches and everything else like that. When I talk to my girlfriends, we talk about childbirth. I mean, you've been through childbirth. Yes. Is that painful? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I was. I'm like a joke. I had the kid. <laughs> mm, I ate a sandwich. <laughs> so you ask asking the wrong. <laughs> but for most people, it's very painful. I just didn't have the time to scream because I had to do a show. So, I just <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, it was. But it's fair, and obviously, it's something you want. Well, it's painful, but for me, it was more painful living as a woman and being trapped inside a body that yeah. I wasn't able to function because I was going through a period of time that, you know, at the three years when I was living and working as a woman, that I was meeting guys, but I couldn't sort of have any relationship. 
I mean, initially it was, it was not too bad because most of the Italian men didn't push the sexual element because most of the Italian girls sort of hang on to their virginity until they're married. So they didn't sort of push it. I just said, you know, uh, no, no, when no. it comes to sort of wandering hands and what have you. That Did you have any sex at all before, the, before you Well, kissing and caressing, but... but um, no actual, it? really, you never really had full sexual... Well, I couldn't really, could I? I mean, well, you had a penis. I mean, you could... <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Well, I, mean, I did have a woman who sort of attacked me once. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, no, it's but, awful. You just, but you really, so you really were a virgin until you became a woman. Yeah. Now, what happened with the first man that you went out with? Did you tell him? No. I mean, I, yeah. it's, it's I mean here we see this great looking <clears throat> woman. I mean, you know, when do you tell? When do it's, you tell? It's very difficult. If I think a relationship is going somewhere, then I, you know, I would find the right moment. But I mean, it's very difficult to sort of say, well, by the way, you know. So, uh, no, I, I, I just hold back until I feel the person's got to know me, and if the relationship's going somewhere, then I'll tell them. Do you have to tell them? Here you are, a woman. If it hadn't come out in the papers, and I really mean this, and you, I'm, I haven't expected you, nor do I wish to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. But I'm sure your doctor made you look. Terrific, sure. because there you are in Playboy, so we can all take a good look at that. Oh. Um, uh, uh, why would you, and the, there are the breasts, and here you are absolutely gorgeous, and a James Bond girl. Why would you feel compelled to tell them? Well, I just think is that you can't have secrets with your partner. I mean, with my husband, I mean, my marriage was a very short one, but we'd been out for two years, and then he asked me to marry him. And I felt, at that point, you know, I would need to share everything. I mean, I couldn't. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with myself, and I'm sure most transsexuals are the same. I mean, there's an awful lot of pressure that we feel ashamed of what we are and, and embarrassed, but it, it's society. So I'm, you know, what I'm, my battle is, is getting through the barriers of ignorance, just to sort of talk about in a public manner, just right. for people to accept and understand and enlightenment, basically. But, now, you went out with men, though, before you had the operation. Sure. And we, were you living with somebody, anybody? Because you're so great looking. Some man had to say, hey, baby, let me put you in an apartment and, you know. Well, there was one. I went to Kuwait with him and he loved me for what I was. And I hadn't and he had knew, an He knew everything. Well, I hadn't had an operation at that time. So, so you, you had, did you have the well, breasts? I had, yes, and the three-piece suite as well. So you had, the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you had boobs and a penis. Right. right. And when did he find, and so obviously he, that turned him on. Well, obviously, yes. I mean, he, I didn't know he was married. I went out to Kuwait and had a wonderful life, but, um, and then discovered when I was out there that he had two other wives. He wanted me to be his third. Um, as well as his brother. <laughs> I mean, he was like, boyfriend. As well as his boyfriend. He, he had some good time in Kuwait. Well, he, <laughs> so, and what, what made you decide to leave? Well, it was just that I, he knew that I wanted surgery. He said to me, you're beautiful as you are. You've got right. the best of both worlds. And yeah. I think for me, that was an important phase of my life, meeting someone who loved me for what I was. Yeah. Um, you know, I had my breasts and I still was complete down below. But it was, it's very difficult for me. I mean, I just looked in the mirror and it detested what I, I, I detested what I saw. I what you saw. So I needed to have that operation to function. And I gave up all the things that many women would probably find, you know, wonderful in a relationship because I had every material thing that a woman would require. I had the emotional sign and he loved me. But, Did um, he make love to you? No. I nearly made love to him. <laughs> he didn't even make no, love to you? Oh, God, where do you luck out like this? <laughs> <laughs> give you all the jewelry and they don't come near you. Have you got his name? <laughs> you give me his name during the commercial. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. And then I want to talk about your, your marriage, because okay. I know it's over, and yet you're still wearing your wedding ring. But it's and not my wedding ring, no. It's um, a stone that he bought me, which I had set. I, I threw the engagement ring back. Uh, let's, let's, well, let's, oh, he, you, oh, we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> so please stay with us. <laughs> Thank you.
Direct Furniture Brokers is the only true discount furniture store in the Atlanta area, and we can prove it. Direct Furniture Brokers, 224 South Main Street in Alpharetta, carries only the top name brands in the furniture industry. We guarantee the lowest prices every day, or we'll refund 110% of the difference in cash. We offer six months, same as cash, with no down payment to qualified buyers. Come browse through our 25,000-square-foot showroom and check out the savings. If we don't have what you're looking for, we'll order at the same guaranteed low prices. That's Direct Furniture Brokers, 224 South Main Street in Alpharetta. If you didn't buy from the brokers, you paid too much, and we... Truck buyers take advantage of the final clearance. All 93s must go. Hi, I'm Angie Stevens. And I'm Tom Parker. Of course, we're here at Atlanta Toyota in Gwinnett. And through this Labor Day, if you're looking to buy a new... By the way, I will be appearing at the Celebrity Theater in Anaheim on November 15th and at the Celebrity Theater again, that's interesting, in Phoenix on November 16th. So please come and see me in one of those two cities. And we are back talking with Tula, uh, who is a transsexual, getting married now. It was a major thing. You caught it for two years, and he had no idea that through those two years of no. your background. Well, I thought he might have because, you know, we were lucky enough to be able to have sex uh, regularly, and I had no periods, but I, I sort of said I had a problem when I was a child. I mean, I hinted enough, but I just couldn't tell him because I just didn't want to ruin some... I mean, I'd broken up with an Italian. He had broken up with a, uh, an American lady, so we were just feeling a bit emotionally raw. Um, so it was refreshing that we both supportive of one another without being heavy right. but I hinted enough that um, no you were already guess. a model or you were already the James Bond girl or you were over a... well I was a sort of a top European model yes at that point okay mm. see then he finally says to you after two years let's get married and you said something to tell you. yes and uh, at that time I'd written another book not this one um, I mean I wrote the other book it was basically like a statement because the way when the press uh, divulged my story. I, I was under an awful lot of pressure to, um, you know, comment, and I felt I had more control over doing my story, so I got out a paperback very quickly. So I gave him that to read, and um, I mean, he accepted it really well. I mean, he said, "God made you this way, and you've made the most of it." So I loved him all the more for it. Yeah. Then he had a condition. He said, "If you love me and, and uh, what have you, would you prepare to convert your religion?" So I was. Church of England, and uh, I spent a year and was happy. I went away to a health farm and took some books on Judaism, and uh, I didn't, I weren't bothered by that and, and everything. So I, I was never really religious. So when I read the fundamentals and the basics of liberal Judaism, it all sort of made sense. Yeah. So I was happy to do that for him. So you converted to him and you got married. Big yeah. wedding? Yes, at the Savoy, 300 people. Well, it's it's a, big, Savoy is a major hotel, so it's like big time, yeah. Um, but sadly, we our honeymoon. I mean, we had all the in discussions about whether we should tell his family or not, but because his mum was in the 70s and the father was in the 90s, and they hadn't, I mean, they, they freaked out the minute they knew I had was Christian. How did they find out? Oh, they freaked out because it wasn't, they freaked out when they found you weren't Jewish. Yes, right. so that was bad enough. That was the first piece of news. Yes. Mother, stop <laughs> crying. We haven't finished the story yet. <laughs> the other shoe drop. <laughs> so they said, so, of course, so they said. <laughs> so we decided to not tell them. I wish I could have told them. <laughs> on, so they so we decided not to tell them and we went. We went for our honeymoon, and we thought we would tell them yeah. sort of two years down right. the line when they see that we were happy, and right. I, you know, proved myself. But I only met the mother three months before we actually got married. Yeah. Um, and we got married, went on a honeymoon to Acapulco, three weeks, and we came back, and it was front page in, in one of the tabloids that I'd married multimillionaire Elias Fatal, because he was a very successful businessman. And he was summoned home by the mother. She was playing the dying swan, and right. the brother took over. I got, two days later, I got a phone call from the brother saying, you need a, a lawyer. Um, I want a divorce. He, the brother? Mm. What happened to the husband? What happened to your husband that loved you so much I don't for know. two I years? Never, I never saw him. You're telling me you went on your honeymoon and you came back and that was that? Mm -hmm. That's horrendous. That's Awful. just Horrendous. And I never had a legal leg to stand on for any settlement at all because the marriage was annulled. It wasn't a legal marriage. So these are the issues of being exposed by right. the press, also being, you know, dumped by my husband. So these are the issues that I'm trying to fight. What kind of a weak guy was he? I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Well, he went with you for two years. I think it was. You converted two. for him. Mm -hmm. And then mommy says, uh oh, and that he, <laughs> it's over? 
How old was this pussycat that you married? How old was he? 47. 47? <laughs> 40, and he was listening to what mommy told him? Maybe right. he needs an operation. <laughs> I mean, a woman let's go to commercial because now we you know that, that's ridiculous i mean you've had the change of sex operation you can't have it on your passport or your birth certificate the passport is fine but, but the, the birth, birth certificate can't be amended so that means that right. means i'm still technically and legally a male but so i that, can't marry anyone at all so you can't get married and if somebody anyone. dumps you you can't get anything out of him no i mean i break the law every day because i use the women's toilet Oh, wait, wait, we'll be back in a moment. That's the second, it's ridiculous. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment, so stay tuned. who's a transsexual author of My Story. I'm sitting here looking at you and I'm thinking how great you look in your clothes. And it's funny because really what they design for fashion designers is a man's body. You don't need to be a top model. You should have no hips, which is what men have, mm -hmm. right? And then you put your boobs in so you've got like great, you know, you're so lucky. And then, <laughs> no, but remember, right? Everyone was going, I gotta get rid of this, these saddlebags. And you haven't got, you also don't have I had that and done. Adam's apple. That's I did have, but I had it turned around and... Because that's, that's the one giveaway, whenever you look at transsexuals, that's the giveaway, yeah, is an Adam's a apple. little scar there, which I... Uh, which I can't even see. So that what? Did that hurt? Very painful. And there was a risk of losing my voice, but it was something that I, I wanted to go through, because in profile, I felt it ruined my profile, having a little... Right. Adam's apple. And so that's why, you, was your voice always a steep then? Um, yes, I mean, I smoke too much, so... <laughs> so, so that's why, because uh, it's a very sexy voice, and that has nothing to do with turning the Adam's apple the other no. way. So you can really do everything these days. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, if they can take the Adam's apple and just change it. Now, let's go back to the laws for a second. Okay. You are legally, I mean, officially operated on, and you're now a woman with all women's parts to you, mm -hmm. right? You have a vagina, you, you can have an orgasm, best. And why won't they change? Can't they even put on your birth certificate? Uh, born a male, became a female, or sure. something to make the, what you do legal as a woman for the rest of your uh, life? Well, I've been uh, trying to get them to amend the birth certificate and then give us legal rights. Right. But, I mean, I can't marry anyone at all. I, I mean, I could marry a woman, technically legally, but I couldn't consummate the marriage, so it would be null and void. If I married a man, I could consummate the marriage, but it would be null because two men can't marry. As I said earlier, my, you know, I commit a crime every day. I go um, but if you walk into the men's room, can you imagine that, sir? You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, and also, if I commit a crime, um, I would be sent to a man's prison in England. It's somebody... It's just silly. I mean, it's silly. Okay, what about so another... Is, it, is this the same in all the countries? What about in this country? Well, no, in most of the states here, the minute you've had surgery, you're given full rights as a woman. I mean, I've met some transsexuals here on this visit, and, and they say, oh, you know, uh, I think it's, it's pathetic how it is in England, not in Europe, in England. Right. I took my case to Strasbourg, and, and uh, I won with 10 votes to 6, but the British government appealed, and I had to go back the year later, um, and I lost with 10 votes to 8. But next year, we join Europe, and I'm having another girl with a home office to try and get, I mean, I've got quite a big petition now, and quite a... Because it's ridiculous. Sport. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Oh, Let's go to commercial, and, and then we'll come back to it with that. And also, what you want to do in 10 years, where you see yourself in 10 years, okay? okay. So we'll be right back in a moment, and stay with us. Georgia, it's the annual Midnight... We are back talking with Carolyn Cossie, who is a transsexual author of the book, My Story, which will soon be out, we hope, in, in the United States. 
do you do? You're such a woman. I was like talking to a girlfriend. We're laughing. We're talking. Um, do you go to the gynecologist? Do you have to do that? Yes. And that's a uh, and be a checkup. And what about mammograms? Yes, you know, we, I, I don't yes. know if I have them in England. Well, but we, breast cancer. Breast, breast, yes, yes, breast cancer. That is something I have to check, especially having um, my boobs done. The I mean, implants. Yeah, the implants. Now, what if you wanted to adopt? Could that's you do that in England? No, because I wouldn't be a suitable mother because I'm still <coughs> classif classified as a as a male. So I wouldn't be a suitable mother. So why don't you just come over and become a citizen of this country? You could certainly model in this country. Sure. Um, well, I'd, I, I mean, I was really seriously thinking about it yeah. down in Atlanta, but unfortunately what has happened there with, uh, you know, the, the few comments, I don't know if I'd be welcome this time if I went down. So I'm just... Uh, <laughs> well, maybe you should just go for a little further north sure. and then work your way back down. <laughs> two, two last questions, if I may. Wh who you see now? You must be going out with somebody now. Yes, I am dating, but I'd rather keep that private okay. at the moment. Okay, but nice? Very sweet. Could you marry him here with a count if you married him here? Sure. So, so just get married in this country? Like, like. <laughs> yes. Where do you want to be in 10 years? Um, I'd like to, to be at what I had when I was with my husband, totally happy and, and have peace of mind and, and know that the 30,000 transsexuals that I'm fighting for in England, as well as how it's turned out, I mean, I've had interest in, in all of Europe, Japan, Australia, and quite a bit of interest here in the States with the fact that I know that they have rights for transsexuals, but, you know, so many transsexuals, you know, get sacked and have yeah. a bad time because people do not understand what we're all about. They well, just associate us with transvestites, and we're not. I, well, you certainly made it very clear today. It was terrific talking with you. Just thank you. a pleasure. I thank you so much. The book, as I said, is called My Story by Caroline Cossey, who is also known as Tula. And we'll be right back with gossip on Robert Redford and Richard Gere. So stay with us.